This is going to be a short and sweet video, and yes, it was very close to lunchtime when I made this one. What I want to talk about today is the Complete Metabolic Panel, or CMP, sometimes referred to as the Chem 14. Now, the CMP is really just the BMP plus calcium plus your standard LFTs. And you can go back to review these videos if you need a refresher, which is why I won't go into too much detail here. It's a nice test because it evaluates general fluid and electrolyte balance, as well as how well major organs involved in hemodynamic stability are functioning, specifically the liver and the kidney. Because there are so many different lab tests included in a CMP, it's definitely overkill to order it daily on all of your patients. But if you suspect that your patient has numerous metabolic derangements, then ordering a CMP is probably a good idea. Now, I told you the CMP consists of the BMP, calcium, and LFTs, which means that it would include the following 14 items. Sodium, potassium, chloride, CO2, UN, creatinine, glucose, calcium, bilirubin, AST, ALT, ALP, albumin, and total protein. The shorthand notation for all of this would look like this in which sodium goes here, potassium goes here, chloride goes here, CO2 goes here, BUN goes here, creatinine goes here, glucose goes here, and calcium goes here. As for the LFT portion, remember that AST goes here, ALT goes here, ALP goes here, bilirubin goes here, total protein goes here, and albumin goes here. Now, the normal values for all of these are listed here for your reference, so feel free to pause and look these over. Since we've already gone over tips and tricks for BMP and LFTs in other videos, I only have one tip for you in this video, and that's the corrected calcium level. Let's say that we have the following CMP values. Looks okay, right? Except that the calcium level, as well as the albumin level, are all low at 7.4 and 2.0 respectively. So our patient must have both hypocalcemia and hypoalbuminemia, right? Well, in this case, the patient only has hypoalbuminemia. His calcium levels are actually appropriate. This is because the measurement for calcium measures the total calcium. About half of that is bound by proteins in the blood, such as albumin, and the other half is free or not married to a protein. Bound or married calcium is pretty much inactive, and it's the free calcium that's really important. Anyway, back to the example. Because there's less albumin, there's less calcium bound to albumin, and hence the total calcium level is lower. However, that doesn't mean that the free calcium level is abnormal. To determine this, use the following equation to find your corrected calcium level. Remember, this is only for the setting of hypoalbuminemia. Your corrected calcium level is equal to 0.8, times 4, which is what you're assuming is the normal albumin level, minus your serum albumin, which is this guy, plus your serum calcium, which is this guy. If the corrected calcium level is within the normal range for calcium, which is 8.5 to 10.2, then your patient is actually not hypocalcemic. And in this example, the corrected calcium level would be equal to 0 0.8 times 4 minus 2 plus 7.4. And you should get 9 if I did my math right, which means our patient is not hypocalcemic. Cool, right? Now, here are our take-home points for this video. The CMP consists of the following, the BMP, calcium, and standard LFTs. The shorthand notation and normal values of these are listed here for your reference. So here's your BMP plus calcium, and here's your LFTs. And lastly, the equation for the corrected calcium level is 0 0.8 times 4, which is what you're assuming is this normal serum albumin, 
minus your serum albumin plus the measured calcium and should be used in the setting of hypoalbuminemia to determine if the patient is truly hypocalcemic. Thanks for watching.